Now, what is a business name? It is how your business will be identified moving forward. That's how people remember your food concept. And this is the first step of creating your entire brand. So if you're thinking about marketing, if you think about designs, we can forget all of those and we need to focus on building your business name. This is where everything starts and that's why it's super, super exciting. Now, why is it important for you to create a good name? Because that's the first impression that your customers see. So when they hear about it from their friends and family, or if they see it online, on Instagram, on websites, this is the first impression. So whatever name you choose, you need to love it, you need to own it because it becomes you, your stuff and your project that you're gonna be working on for months, right? If not years. For us, 720 Suites, we built that brand from scratch and we had to own that name and became our identity for the last five years. And so that's the reason why you need to own it, you need to love it. However, don't let this be a reason of you not taking action because this is a very, very common thing that I see is that people don't take action because they cannot find and perfect their name. Pro tip, a lot of people, a lot of students of mine, they're scared to take that step forward. They're scared to commit. They're scared to take action. They're scared to quit their job. They're just scared because of whatever reasons they may there, there may be. And the excuse that they often fall back into is that, hey, you know what, I cannot find a name. I want a name that is cool. I want a name that uh, resembles me. I want a name that does this, does that. And always about excuses after excuses and hiding behind the fact that they don't have the perfect name to start. And that's something that I don't want you to make. I want you to commit to a name by the end of this lesson. I want you to do the research and at the end of this whole prog uh, process, I want you to identify that name and just go with it because you can always revisit down the road and change the branding. You can always evolve as a brand. So don't let this be a reason for you not to take action. Now, the three ways to name your brand, the exciting things, name plus functional. What does that mean? That means this is the most common way to name your food brand. And we see this a lot of times out there, right? So basically putting your name or someone's significant name at the front and then plus a description at the end of the stuff that you're offering. So for example, we have Wilson's fried chicken. The way to name your brand with name and functional is the fact that it's easy and to the point and it is memorable yet it is not original. So this is something that you can start off with and you can evolve down the road. Um, once again, the pros is that when people look at this brand, they know exactly what I'm serving. I'm, ser I'm serving fried chicken, Wilson's fried chicken. The cons of that, right? The disadvantage is just that it's just not that special. It's just like any other name out there. Now, the second way to name your business is to follow a generic theme whether it be an adjective, a noun, an action, or simply a concept, this could become a name for your specific food uh, item. The pros of this is that it's a much cooler story that comes with it, it seems like, and also there's a sense of mystery. When people read this, they understand the name uh, when what it means as a standalone, as a definition. However, they don't know what your twist is with it, and they have that curiosity about, hey, why is it that specific name? However, the disadvantage of going with a generic theme name is the fact that it's not the easiest to remember because it's a little bit more generic. And on top of that, it does require a little bit more effort to build that brand. So for example, Chipotle. When you look at, when you think about Chipotle, when you hear Chipotle, before Chipotle Mexican Grill was born, you didn't know what it was. You didn't you didn't have that resonation of that specific brand and in terms of what they have to offer. But because Chipotle did such a great job in their branding and in their expansion, we now all know Chipotle as that Mexican grill place. So for your name, you can follow something generic as well. Next up, random names. Names that don't mean much and it, or it could be a combination of many different names, two names, whatever the case may be. The pros of this is that it is very, very unique and most likely you're not gonna be able to have other restaurants or other food concepts with the same name. However, the big disadvantage to this is that it's very hard to remember and it's very difficult to build a name off random names because people just don't register to that and there's no uh, connection 
to that specific name unless you know what you're doing and unless you have the ability to build a great brand that is memorable. For example, Kidoba, right? What is it? I have no clue what it is, but it's also a food brand that's out there. So once again, this is a random name uh, way of naming. I don't really recommend using random names. I like a number one and number two the most, okay? Now that you have a name and you came up with something that you're like, oh, this is pretty good. What next? Next, because we're setting up our online presence, because we're distributing online, we need to check right away about all the different social domains. And we need to see whether they have a website, whether you can have their Instagram, whether you can have a YouTube, whether you can have Facebook. And the best way to do that is through a site called namecheck.com. So basically you enter in your name, and the, the food business name that you're wanting, and automatically it will show you which domains are taken with that name. So definitely go check them out. After you checked the name that has availability on Instagram uh, or as a website, then you can know that, oh, this is a name for me because it's available as an account. So instead of you going to Instagram and checking out whether the name works and then going on YouTube, having checking that name, whether it's available or taken, going on uh, Facebook, going on your website domain, you can all use name check to do that, right? So after you do your name check, you finalize on your name, it is time to register for all the free accounts first, okay? We're talking about Gmail, we're talking about Instagram, we're talking about Facebook. And then as an optional item that when you are ready to invest, you can actually go and purchase their domain, look into multiple domain purchasing platforms and to compare prices. So something that I recommend would be godaddy.com or siteground.com. And these are really great sites that you can just go in there, buy a domain for four bucks, 10 bucks, something like that, right? So not a very hefty investment. Next up, Shopify, right? If you're planning to do e-commerce, use a Shopify account. Yes, I know there's gonna be a monthly fee, but it is worthwhile because of the user experience, okay? It is something that you don't need to set up right away. However, just have this as a bookmark and come back to this later on. We'll cover this in depth in the future lessons as well. And then Facebook and Instagram can also be a shop itself if you don't have a Shopify account. And once again, we'll cover this later on in the, uh, in the, the other lessons, okay? So as an example, this is basically the name check, okay? Uh, and this is our name search. We put down a few different names and ideas based on the naming uh, methods that I shared with you. And then we use name check to see if they're available online, whether the Facebook name is taken, whether Instagram or Twitter link is, is taken, and whether the .com is taken. If they are taken, then I would choose a different variation of the name. So for example, with the case study of Bulbasaur, and if you don't know what Bulbasaur is, it's basically a case study that we created. It's a bubble tea at home kit that we created, so then that way we can showcase to you as a case study. So. Originally, when we were thinking about a name for this business, we were thinking about Bulbasaur. And it sounds cool because Boba, we're selling Boba, and Bulbasaur sounds great. But then we see that the Facebook accounts are taken, the Twitter accounts are taken, so we had to change the name. And what we did was just added a YVR at the end of it, and then all the names became available so we can actually register for it. So adding these kind of um, uh, uh, I, uh, names at the end of your desired name can also work as well. Now it is your turn. Let's go have some fun and name your food concept. Okay. Follow the name search template in the link below. 